for you. I have to go outside to tick all the dogs. I have to go outside and play now. Huh? Might be a good thing. Yeah. I tell you what, it's quiet in there. I don't like quiet house. I like some noise. Some noise and some smell. Some good home cooking smell, you know? So the girl's gone, so we don't get no home cooking either. We eat out a lot. It's only been two days, folks. <laughs> but it's it's all right. It's all right. Thank you all so much for understanding. Tracy and I, we celebrated our 23rd anniversary on Saturday. And uh, we got away and got by ourselves for a couple of days and was able just to do some, do a few things. We went to a baseball game that got rained out. And the baseball game, they were already blowed out by the second inning. So we decided just after it started raining, they were pulling the tarps out in the fifth inning. I said, let's just leave. This is this is already ugly. So uh, we, we didn't stay for the whole thing and got to just, just spend a few co- a couple of days together before the girls came up to the Durham area and got them moved in and, I told Kelsey when I was leaving yesterday, I said, I'll see you Sunday. She said, Dad. I said, hey, can't blame a man for trying, right? Can't blame a man for trying. So anyway, keep them in your prayers. Christian's got an event, uh, an all-day event that she's got to be at on Saturday. And so I don't, I'm not sure what they're going to do this weekend. Just, I guess it depends on how their schedules go. But uh, we're going we're gonna to work through it and see what God does. So it's all good. Uh, there was an outreach that was scheduled for this coming Saturday. It's been postponed until September. If you've got questions about that, see Tasha, and she'll be able to tell you more about that. Is that the only announcement I got tonight? Hello? You can fix your hair later. I mean my announcements. I'm already late. This coming Saturday night, there is a movie night with some hot dogs. Uh, 6 o'clock here at the church. I encourage you to come out and uh, enjoy a good Christian movie and, and, and a good Church of God hot dog. I had two today, but they weren't Church of God. They were Circle K. I'm sure the Church of God hot dogs will be a lot better than the Circle K ones. All right, so that's going on Saturday. Boy, she's moved me right along. All right, so uh, we're uh, praying for Fanny. Continue to pray for her. My understanding is she was here Sunday, but uh, she does need a touch from the Lord, so continue to remember her. Miss Loretta, how you doing? That's why they call it practice. They're going to figure it out one way or the other. The doctors ain't fixing, they're practicing. So uh, just continue. So they're thinking that because of your bladder issues might be causing your back issues. Is that right? Okay. All right. So they're shooting in the right direction anyway, right? So uh, continue to remember Miss Loretta that God would touch her. Uh, continue to remember Tony Wall, uh, uh, who was uh, going through treatments with cancer. Uh, Amy Cushman. Uh, who's uh, post-surgery diagnosis with cancer. So remember, Amy, uh, R- Sheila, you can give us an update on Ronnie? Go ahead. So they're betting and you're believing. All right, we'll take that. Let them bet. We'll believe. Thank the Lord for that. So continue to remember uh, Ronnie. Odell Hester's also continued to uh, fight cancer. So remember him. George Fisher, uh, Tab's uh, biological dad. Um, I think we take him off. They sent him home, uh, uh, what Tabitha told us. So uh, we just continue to pray for him, but they, they did send him home. Was that what we heard? I thought so. So uh Nancy uh, Baylock uh, is not doing well, needs salvation. Arthur Wright uh, is dealing with uh, stage 4 lung cancer that they cannot treat, but God can. And so we're praying for that. Edwin Huffman, who's uh, awaiting a parole board decision. Uh, Eddie, you got an update on Eddie, Bill Mike? Yeah. How about Barbara? I see you. Praise God. Awesome. 
You want to praise the Lord for your little helper back there? I said, you want to praise the Lord for your little helper back there? She, you probably didn't even hear her, did you? No, Peggy, she's hollering out what you should have said. Every man needs a little helper. Praise God. Helpmate, that's what the scripture calls it, helpmate. Help us alone, ladies, help us alone. Caroline Barnett is dealing with high blood pressure, growth on the eye and a biopsy. Uh, Madison, uh, has she been to that doctor yet, Brother Jim? All right. Uh, Shirley Goodson, who's uh, Gina Bumgarner's mom, dealing with COPD. Um, for those of you who don't know, Marcus was with us last Wednesday, and uh, we prayed with him after the service and just believing for the Lord to touch him. And by Friday, I had him with Eddie James. He is at, he's in Cleveland. And uh, I called Eddie, and Eddie said he would be glad to take him. And Marcus said it is uh, a world of difference for him up there, uh, which – uh, you know, a lot of people may or may not like Eddie's ways of doing things as far as music and things like that or dance teams and stuff like that. But one thing I can say for him, he pulls them out of the world, submerges them in the word and prayer and saturates them in that and just takes out the elements to give them to a place that they can just focus and do what they need to do. And so uh, I thank God for his ministry and, and and just the fact that he's taking Marcus in and, and uh, uh, Tracy's texted back with him a couple times. I don't know if you had much communication with Sister Brenda. He seems to be doing a world of difference for him, man, and just in a week's time. Uh, so we thank the Lord for that. Just continue to pray for him, uh, that God will continue to touch him. Uh, Tommy Sigmund, uh, we've, we've gotten a couple phone calls for Tommy. This is uh, Sister Sheila Rutledge's daughter uh, who is in the ER with such just severe back pain. Uh, not really sure what all was going on with her, but uh, just continue to remember her, if you will, that God would touch her and minister her. Also talked with Angie McFarland yesterday about Mike. Um, they're actually getting ready to start doing some treatments on him uh, for this esophageal cancer that he's got. Uh, they're taking it a day at a time. Uh, Angie says she can feel the prayers. Uh, she said if one thing good has come out of this, she said, I just don't believe uh, that, uh, that God does some of the things that we give him credit for and the devil does things that we just kind of throw off on other people. She said, but one good thing come out of this. She said, Mike has absolutely submerged himself in the things of God. His word, she said, he's spending three hours a day reading his Bible and praying and seeking God's face. So um, um, his daughter asked him the other night, said, Dad, uh, when you come out of this, what are you going to do? He said, I can tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going back to serving the devil. He said, I'm going to continue serving God. So uh, I thank the Lord for that. Uh, but continue to lift them up in prayer, if you will. Uh, that God would touch them and minister to them. Uh, just before service, my mom, actually, my mom sent me a text yesterday. My dad, um, uh, who's very hard-headed, if you don't know it, uh, just look at his son, and uh, it's a chip off the old block. But um, my dad, who's supposed to be retired from fire and rescue, uh, went on a rescue call on uh, yesterday, I believe it was, and some, somehow in the midst of trying to help the person that was in the wreck or however it was, he banged his leg against a bridge, concrete bridge, and uh, did a lot of bruising and severe damage. Uh, my dad's on blood thinners because of his heart condition. He lost two units of blood uh, from that. They've, uh, they've, they've sent him home, told him to keep his leg up. Uh, I mean, his, from his knee to his ankle is blood red. I mean, it's just completely red from bruising. And, and it's not like dark bruising. It's bright red blood bruising, it's, and, and it's just oozing and carrying on. So to the point that he's got blisters, blood blisters that are popping up on his skin. Uh, I'm not telling you that to gross you out. I'm just telling you that because that's where my dad's at. And uh, uh, I do appreciate your prayers for him, uh, for his leg, and then also for that other part of his body a little further up, his head. Uh, that he would be wise and uh, doing what he needs to do and realize he's not 35 years old anymore uh, and jumping out there and doing some of the stuff he's doing. My dad's got a heart the size of this room and will do what he's got to do to help anybody. Uh, and I think that's why he loves the fire and rescue. He's been doing it as long as I can remember, but just going and, and putting himself in harm's way. And I shared this uh, last week when I was, uh, week before last when I was preaching about saving people from the fire. Uh, that's just my dad's attitude. He'll put his life, his stuff, his things on the line all day long to go and help somebody else. But um, uh, just from the loss of blood, my mom said he's dealing with a severe headache and uh, just dealing with a lot of pain from that. Uh, so if you would, just remember my dad that God would touch him and minister to him. 
Did I cover everything? Somebody else got, got something? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. I remember him being on the list for something before, but uh remember Vernon. Okay. And that's all for Vernon. So he's gone to India for a mission, and uh, he's on the back end of prostate cancer. So uh, remember him, if you will. Yes, sir, Brother David. Vicki Curley is having, a, I'm assuming you're saying a hysterectomy for uh, cancer. All right. So remember Vicki Curley. What's her name? Melinda Backstrom for a hysterectomy here in the next couple of weeks. So remember this, if you will, that God will touch her and minister her. A lot of requests, a lot of needs, but a big God, a big God, faithful God, a God that's always on time, can do the impossible and make a way where there seems to be none. Amen? Amen. A faithful God. The devil would love, and I'm kind of picking up where I left off last week, the devil would love to take all this stuff and just berate you and beat up on your mind and your thinking and your thought process and try to get you where you're doubting and in fear and worrying and stressing. But my Bible tells me to be anxious for nothing. You know, we, we, don't, we don't worry about this stuff. I, I rode by a church. I can't even remember where I was at. I've been to so many different places over the last several days. But I was rode by a church uh, this week, and, and the sign said, Why worry? Pray. And I thought to myself, that's just about as plain as you can make it and as simple as it is. And as profound as it is, all these lists that if my wife could scroll through, there's probably two or three other pages of, of, of people that we've been praying for and believing for, for miracles. And, and, and like I'm saying, that the, the devil tries to bring this oppression to the church to hinder us from really being effective the way that we're supposed to be. But we're not serving a dead God. We're not serving a God that's not aware. We're not serving a God that's powerless. We're not serving a God that cannot do what we've asked him to do. The God that we're calling on right now is the same God. And I've said this many times. He's the same God at the creation of the heavens and the earth declared, let it be, and it was. The same God that spoke to, to red seas and they opened up and parted it with dry ground and he walked across. The same God that spoke to lions that became pillars for Daniel. The same God that spoke to a fire and told the fire, don't you burn my prophets, don't you burn my servants. And it didn't touch Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The same God that testified, put this body in the ground in three days I'll raise it up. The same God that on that third day that got up with resurrection power as Malachi declared with healing power in his wings. That same God is the same God that we have the audience of right now that when we call on his name he said I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. Praise God. We serve a great God. A faithful God. A sovereign God. An awesome God that we get the opportunity right now to call on and bring all these needs and requests that we don't have to come in fear. We don't have to come with stress. We don't have to come with anxiety. We can come in faith believing, declaring to God that these are nothing for you, God. And we call on you right now. Would you pray with me, Father? In the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, the name that every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The name that demons tremble and flee. The name of Jesus that sicknesses are healed and bondages are broken and addictions, God, are taken down. God, I thank you for that. Every high thing that exalts itself against you, oh God, we can cast it off and take the authority that you've given unto us. It's the declaration of that name that we can bind things that need to be bound and loose things that need to be loosed. What a powerful name, the name of Jesus. Jesus. God, that we can call on you in faith, believing and trusting. God, that you will perfect that which you've begun in us against the day of Jesus Christ. God, those things that we've committed to you, God, you will perfect them in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that cancer is not so big that it cannot fall at the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that heart disease and kidney issues and bladder issues are not so big that the declaration of your name 
that those things cannot be healed. By your stripes we were healed. Healing is ours if we can just receive it and believe it. I pray tonight, God, for every need and request that's been mentioned, for every need and request that's represented in this room, for every need and request that's on our list. God, we pray for healing tonight. We pray for deliverance, God. We pray for bondages to be broken and addictions, God, for them just to fall off people, that they lose the very taste and desire for the things that are not of you, God, that they would taste and see that the Lord is good. God, I praise you tonight for the promise of your word. I praise you tonight, God, for the goodness of your glory. I give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise for the great things that you're doing, God. I bless your holy name tonight. Father, I ask you as we go into this time of your word, God, that you would give us the great wisdom that we need, the understanding, and, and the humility, God, be able to handle your word with, with carefulness, but God, with boldness. To God, to be able to, to, to show and demonstrate through your word your great power for all that you've done and all that you're about to, God. We give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. Bless our teachers tonight, those that are teaching our kids, our young people, our children. God, I pray that you would minister through them and use them in a powerful way. God, as they bring forth the word to our classes. Father, I love you so much. I give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And all these things God's people said, amen, amen. So last Wednesday night, for those of you that were here, we've been talking about a prophetical review of the church. And we're in chapter 12 of of the book of Revelation. And in this particular book, just a very quick uh, overview of what we've been talking about. We've talked about within this this chapter, beginning with the first verse, it talks about the woman that was clothed with the sun, how that some people look at it as an allegory of the church, but more prophetically about Israel and how that Israel was that woman that was clothed with the sun and and, and her portion in in, in prophetical works by God and, and the condition of this woman that she was a with child that crying and travailing in birth as it tells us in verse 2 that she she was pained and distressed to be delivered or to bear this child that you will but in the midst of this 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 pregnancy in the midst of this this child birthing we see a devil a red dragon that comes up in verse 3 the second sign in heaven that there appears another one wonder in heaven and behold a, a great dragon heaven seven heads ten horns seven crowns or the greek says diadems or monarch crowns upon his head and so this dragon Satan that we we talked about over the last couple of weeks and the things that he's doing the governing power the 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 rulership that he has here in this world the things that he is trying to accomplish the mistress of this dragon that we see in verse 4 where he takes his tail and with this tail a a, a third portion of of the uh, stars of heaven did cast him to the earth and the prophetic word that's being brought here to John as we see Satan that fell in uh, Isaiah chapter 14 we see the fall of Satan, how he took a third of the angels with him. And, and now all of this is, is beginning to come to pass. And John's beginning to see this in this particular vision. He, he attacks the church. We see it in the last portion of chapter 4. And this is where we ended up last week. That the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to d- be delivered and, uh, to devour her child as soon as it was born. The, the devil, and, and I went back and I kind of re-listened to my message from last Wednesday night. But the devil wants to destroy you. The devil wants to steal from you. The devil wants to kill you. The devil wants to manipulate you. He wants to mess with your mind. He wants to mess with your thinking. He wants to mess with your faith. He wants you to walk by sight and not by faith. He wants to get your eyes on your circumstances and on your stuff. But this is where we as people of God have to be determined to keep our focus in the place that it must be. We have to be focused on the Lord God Almighty. We have to be focused and look to the hills from whence cometh our help our help comes from the Lord and so this is the place that we need to focus the devil wants to do everything he can to see that wayward son or that wayward daughter or, or see that husband or that, that, that wife that's backslid and falling away from God the devil wants us to do everything we can to keep our, ver- our vision horizontal when we shouldn't have our vision vertical that we're looking to God that we're looking to him as the author and the finisher of our faith so as we look to him and we resist that devil, and we've submitted ourselves to God, the, devil, the, the Word tells us that that devil will flee from us. So he's come to antagonize the church. He came during this particular time to antagonize Israel, especially at the birth of Jesus Christ. And this is where we pick up tonight. Revelation chapter 12, 
Verse 5, the very first ver- ver- verse portion of that verse says, She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God in his throne. That first portion there, that she brought forth this child who was the ruler who is about to shepherd all nations with a rod or a staff of iron. Now notice something about this. The Bible's very specific to note that it's a male child. The Old Testament church brought forth Christ, the Messiah, the male child. The, 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 the Old Testament church did this. This child is to shepherd all nations with a rod of iron. It's the same as the stone that was cut out of the mountain without hands. Look at Daniel chapter 2, verse 44 and 45. He said, In the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Verse 45, or the rest of this verse, It shall break in pieces and consume all the kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Inasmuch as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the, the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has made known to the king what will come to pass after this. The dream is certain and his interpretation is sure. Now, what Daniel is seeing here, he's seeing this, he's, he's interpreting this dream, he's seeing this dream of all this, this figure that Nebuchadnezzar saw, and he's talking about the feet, how the feet were going to be destroyed by this stone that was cut out of the mountain without hands. The stone, remember what Jesus identified himself. He said, I am that stone that the builders rejected. That stone that was cut out, but it was cut from natural means, if you will. It was cut by supernatural means, not even cut by hands, that that God himself placed and positioned Jesus Christ for such a time as this. At the fullness of time as it come, that the virgin gave forth the son, that God brought forth his son for the sake of the world, to be that stone that the builders would reject, but to be that stone that would crush the elements of this world and begin to rule with the rod of iron. Now, I like this last portion of this, of this verse where he said the dream is certain and the interpretation is sure. Basically what Daniel's saying here is this. What God says, God means, and if God said it, it'll come to pass. You can take confidence in the word of the Lord. You can take confidence in the things that God has spoken. You take confidence in the fact that even as we're reading the book of Revelation and we're looking especially in chapter 12 as it concerns the church and the fight with the devil, you can take confidence in what Jesus said unto Peter, Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So what am I to do? I'm to stay in the boat. I think about Paul when they were fighting Eurachlodon and, 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 and Paul stood up and said, Be of good cheer, men and brethren, for, for there stood by me this night the angel of God and, and, and I believe it even so as he told it unto me. He said, There shall not be loss of any life but only of the ship. But the main thing was they had to stay in the boat. The men came and began to try to get out in the lifeboats and, and Paul said, If anybody leaves, they'll be destroyed. This is what you've got to understand, folks. We're in a very crucial time in history right now. The crucial time that we are, I believe that we're in that place where the church is about to transition from the place in the world to be called up to be together with the Lord and so shall we ever be with Him. I believe we're in that time of transition where God is beginning to draw people and putting things together and pull His plan of fulfillment together to be able to help the church to get in alignment so that when the trumpet of God sounds that we can be called home. But if you leave the boat, if you leave the house, you very well could be left behind. So the understanding is, if you don't want to face the gates of hell and find destruction, stay in the boat, stay in the house, stay in the church, because it's a place that is founded upon the rock, that is not cut out by hands, but is founded on the rock, Christ Jesus. And in that place, you will find safety and you'll find refuge. Even David understand this. He said, when my heart's overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that's higher than I, and there I'll be safe. Listen, folks, there's been times my heart's been overwhelmed and worrying anxiety and junk and stuff of this world but I've crawled up into the lap of Jesus and put my arms around him and it's in that place that I find peace it's in that place that I find safety it's in that place that I find refuge because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that my God will fight for me and if God is for me nobody can be against me praise the Lord this stone that's cut out of the mountains without man's without hands Daniel chapter 7 Verses 9 through 14. Do 
Do I have that one up there? There we go. I watched till thrones were put in place and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne, his throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Talking about God. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times. Ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. I watched him because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking. I watched till the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As for the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I was watching in the night visions. And behold, one like the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. Now, we read it just a moment ago in the earlier chapter, Daniel chapter 2, we see where God would establish the, 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 the one that would rule with the rod of iron, that he would establish his kingdom and it will, shall not be destroyed. Well, God comes right back in chapter 7 of Daniel and reminds him that this one that God is establishing is the Son of Man, and He's going to give him dominion. He's going to give him glory. He's going to give him a kingdom. Why? That all people should obey Him and serve Him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. In other words, it's not going to pass away. In other words, it's not going to fade away. It's only going to grow stronger and stronger, and my God's going to establish it to the point that God's going to stand on the last day. Listen, friend, God has the first word when he said let it be and at the last day God's going to have the last word when he pulls it all together for his glory. You can't get away from it. You can't shake it off of it. I don't care what kind of theology of God my God had the first word he'll have the last word. Jesus Christ is the first and the last. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end and if my God has declared it, it will come to pass. Glory to God. Glory to God. The kingdoms of this earth, they're going to be given to Christ. He's going to shepherd them with a rod of iron. Revelation chapter 11, verse 15 through 19. Revelation 11 through 15 through 19. He said, then the seventh angel sounded. And there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who sat before God on the thrones fell on their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was and who is to come, because you have taken your great power and reigned. The nations were anger and your wrath has come in the time of the dead, that they should be judged and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints, and those who fear your name small and great, and should destroy those who destroy the earth. Then the temple of of God was opened in heaven and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple and there were lightnings and noises and thunderings and earthquake and great hail. I share this with you. Why? Because you've got to understand when God sets up his kingdom he's going to rule with rod of iron. He's going to rule with judgment. He's going to let all those that know that, 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 that have forsaken him all those that did not commit their life to him all those that will be left on this earth at that time. All those kings that have stood up and stood against and, 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 and uh, apostasy against his, his word and against his rule and reign He's going to set up his dominion. He's going to let them know, boys, I know that you had a way, you had a, a time while you had it, but your time is up. It's my time. And my time is going to be an everlasting time. And what I'm about to establish, you cannot destroy. You can raise up what you want to raise up. You can do what you want to do. But what I'm about to establish and what I'm about to set up, no man's going to be able to take it down. I'm still the God that can set up a nation in a day, and I can take it down in a day. I'm still God, and what I set up will stand as a king kingdom that shall not be destroyed this event will occur at the end of the great tribulation the seventh trump will be sounded the dragon wants to rule also he's going to rise up and he's going to rise up in opposition to Christ this is why he gives the world to the antichrist Christ is to reign with irresistible authority and power over the whole world or as John said it all nations See, there was a promise given to the church in Thyatira that they could be co-sharers with Christ in this ruling if they overcame. Look at Revelation chapter 2, 26 and 27. Going back a little bit. Revelation 2, 26 and 27. He said, and he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels, as I also have received from my Father. Look what Jesus told this church in Thyatira. God's going to set me up a kingdom. My kingdom is going to be an everlasting kingdom. The devil's going to raise up and try to destroy it, but I'm going to put him in his place. 
And he said, if you overcome, if you'll fight to the end, if you'll endure, just like Jesus told him in the Gospels, if you go endure to the end, the same shall be saved. He said, I'm not promising it's going to be easy. I'm not telling you that, 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 you know, that, that you're not going to have times of falling down. You might get knocked down in some of these episodes. You might even take some wounding. You might even take some hard time. You might have to go through some trials. But I want you to know if you'll keep pressing on, if you'll keep enduring, if you'll keep fighting, if you'll keep coming, I'm going to set you up that you're going to rule and reign with me. I'm going to set you up that you're going to have dominion like I've got dominion. I'm going to set up your part. You're going to have a part in the kingdom that will never pass away and that will never be destroyed. Listen, folks, I don't know about you, but I fought the devil for a long time, and I can't wait to get my dominion back and get my authority in the place that I can let that devil know once and for all, you fought me, you beat up on me, you come against me, but now's the day, now's the time that my God's going to set up his kingdom, and we're going to finally have victory over you once and for all. My God, I'm declaring today that our authority is ours. It's promised to us in the Word of God, and what God said is ours is ours. And we ought to rejoice in that because victory is coming. We can rejoice in the fact that the war is about over and my God's going to set up his dominion and we win for the glory of God. We win for the glory of God. Hallelujah, we win for the glory of God. He said, what I've received from the Father, I'm going to give it unto you. Don't you know that every good and perfect gift cometh down for the Father of love? Don't you know that what God has for you is perfect? Don't you know what God wants to do in your life is perfect? Don't you know the places that God wants to take you to are perfect? That listen, it might look like dark places, it might look like valleys, but I'm telling you, even if you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, my God is with you. I don't care where he leads me. I just want to know that he's there with me. I don't care what I have to walk through. I just want to trust him in the moment and say, my God, you're for me. And God, you're going to see me through. And you're going to give me the victory, God. I praise your holy name tonight. He said, what my Father's given unto me, I'm going to give it unto you just like I received it. And what all the enemies tried to set up, I'm going to dash it to pieces. Every plan is going to be thwarted. Every scheme is going to be brought down. Every carnal weapon is going to be destroyed. Every bow that the enemy tries to pull his arrows back with are going to be snapped in two. Every sword he raises up will melt in the heat of his fervency. I'm telling you, friend, there's no weapon that's formed against you that's going to prosper. What the devil's trying to do to destroy, he's already wounded. He's already defeated. My God's already done what he did at Calvary, and he's coming back to establish his rule and reign. And thank God I get to be a part of it. See everything the devil's trying to do to bring me down, get destroyed and shattered into pieces. Glory to God. Glory to God. I, I wonder sometimes if some of the Old Testament prophets and men of God that were there, they, they saw the abilities of God to cause enemies to fall down at their feet. David talked about how he would call his enemies to fall down at his left hand, 10,000 in his right hand. God said, I, I, I'll, bring them to, I'll bring those enemies down. I, I'll even prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. We're going to have a table in those seven years, folks. There's a supper coming. I don't know what they're serving, and I could care less. I know there are people who say, oh, I can't wait to get there to get the fried chicken and the watermelon. I don't care. They can serve a big platter of green beans. Let me show up. As long as they let Paula cook them. I'll, I'll eat hers. I don't care what they put before me. I just want to be there. Praise God. I want to be a part of this winning uh, uh, victory that God's going to produce through his son, Jesus Christ. I want to see the devil's plans and everything the devil thought he could do to get, get over on Christ. I want to see him fall down in, 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 in utter humility and bow that knee and declare Jesus Christ to be the son of the living God, to be the great I am, to be the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And it's coming, folks. He don't want to talk about it. He don't want to deal with it, but he's coming. Why? Because if he was going to get him, he should have got him before God brought his plan to pass. And even in that, and everything they tried to do, God was always one step ahead of the devil. After Jesus was born, Herod sent out the, Herod sent out the, 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 the declaration to kill all the children. Jesus escaped into Egypt. God knew what he was doing. God knows how to protect his folks. 
Let me just sidestep here for just a moment. Some of us, we groan and moan because things seem to get out of whack. We get out of places that are comfortable to us. Sometimes it might be the protection of God protecting us from the enemy. Sometimes you might wonder why you got to take that detour on the life's, uh, on life's interstate, but yet there's, there, there's protection in that because God is guiding every step and he's purposing every step. Don't, don't you listen. You ought to praise him when it seems like life is taking a side road. You ought to praise him when it seems like things might be just putting your heart. You ought to praise him when you feel like you're sitting in a traffic jam of life. You ought to praise him because he's protecting you. My God orders every step. My God takes care of everything in your life. He knows what he's doing. So if I could just sidestep for moment if he looked out for Jesus and got him into Egypt to protect him from a wicked king my God he'll do the same thing for you to protect you from the failures of this life and the things that the enemy tries to do to bring you down God wants to resurrect you God wants to empower you God wants to give you dominion and victory he don't want you robbed from him. he don't want you stealed he don't want you killed he wants the devil defeated in your life he wants you walking in victory because of what Jesus Christ has done for you and you ought to worship him for that God, I'll take the detour. I'll take the detour as long as you're with me. God, I'll take the side road as long as you're with me. Tracy and I, Sunday evening, we were going to a place, and I ain't going to lie to you. She was, she was navigating for me with the GPS. If you ever follow GPS in a place you don't know, sometimes you'll in a say Next road, turn left. You'll turn left. You're like, what in the world did I just get myself into? I ain't going to lie to you. I told Tracy I needed to get some cash. We put up this four-way stop sign. There was a, a liquor store looked like. I don't know what it was. It, it was a small brick building. wasn't no bigger than this stage right here. It had a big sign that said ATM. Tracy said, there's an ATM. I said, you got to be out of your mind. I, I don't even want to stop at this stop sign. If you know anything about the cut, you know that sometimes when people go up shaking hands, they ain't greeting one another. Y'all know what I'm talking about? They ain't greeting one another. Th this young fella walked over and shook this old fella's hand, and they held hands for just a little bit. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, they just passed drugs right there. I guarantee you. I mean, we were in the, the backwoods in a place that I didn't want to go back to again. And I'm wondering, why in the world am I over here? Why is this GPS taking me this way? But if you looked on the, on the map as a whole, you saw that the way that I wanted to go, that it was just filled with hindrances and traffic and blocks and, and everything. And Tracy, Tracy will validate this. We took that little cut through rough areas, but we come right out in the back and pulled straight into the parking lot. When you looked up the road, they were lined up just trying to get to where we just cut through and got to. Now, now I, I shared that with you to say this. Sometimes God will take you through rough places just to get you to where you're going. You're wanting the comfortable roads. I hit every pothole and speed hump that was through that neighborhood. But I got to where I needed to get to, and I got there right on time. We didn't miss a thing. We were able to walk right in the gate. I mean, I, I, I'd never been. It was the ball game we went to, the baseball game we went to. I'd never been to a baseball game that I didn't have to stand in a long line. Tracy and I walked to the, we pulled in, we parked, we walked across the street. I had my tickets on the, on the cell phone. I mean, I walked up, there was two people in front of us. He sent one of them away, and the other person he let walk on through. Click, click, he clicked on my phone and, 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 and got my ticket, and we walked right in straight to our seats. Well, not straight to our seats. We, we toured the stadium, let's put it that way. Because we didn't quite know how we was going to get to our seats, but we found it. But I said all that to say this. We, we had to go through some rough places to make better time. Sometimes you got, God might lead you through rough places to help you make better time. I don't know who that's for tonight. Maybe you're in a rough patch somewhere and you're saying, God, why am I over here? But God's got a plan for you. you got to trust Him even in the rough moments. When it ain't all working for the way that you thought it would. When you, when you want to be on the interstate traveling at 70 and God's got you on a back road doing 15. And you're saying, God, why am I over here? I got you. Don't worry about it. Just keep moving. There's a couple times we got traffic jams. And I, Trace, Trace is like, oh, we, we got to get out of this. And I'm like, we moving. I remember one time I said, don't worry about it. We moving. We might be doing 30 in a 60 mile an hour zone, but we moving. 
So, sometimes you just got to be content with the fact that you're moving. Amen. I know the enemy wants to throw hindrance in life, but sometimes you just got to keep moving. You might not, you might be moving at a snail's place, but one step forward is forward. It ain't where I used to be. Oh, God. It ain't where I used to be. It ain't where I used to be stuck in. But I'm moving forward. I might not be moving faster than everybody else around me, but I'm moving forward. Listen, friend, that's what it was about Jesus. When Jesus came to this earth, it didn't happen right away. They thought that the king was coming. He was going to come in as a full-grown adult. He was going to set up his kingdom. And we're still waiting on him to establish that kingdom. They thought he was going to do it when he came the last time. But he's going to do it when he comes the next time, folks. And he's not coming back as a baby in a manger. He's coming back as king of kings and lords. Lord of Lords, riding on that horse with complete victory. I'm telling you, friend, I thank God I'm on the winning side. I'm on the winning side. So here we see it in Revelation 12, verse 5 again, that last portion of that verse, that the child was caught up unto God and to his throne. So this, this prophetical review of the church they're beginning to see from the conception of Israel and the conception of, of, of Christ, the man-child that was birthed into Israel to set up to rule with a rod of iron. And now the Bible says in this last part that he was caught up to God and to his throne. Now, obviously, this is a moment of looking back to Jesus being resurrected and ascending to the heavens. Let's look at a few scriptures about this. Mark chapter 16, verse 19. The Bible says, Then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. John saw this. John was there a part of this, and now God's bringing it back to him in a vision. In Luke chapter 24, 49 through 53, we said, Behold, I send you the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are in due with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany and lifted up his hands and blessed them. Now it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continuing in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. He was caught up away from them. In Acts chapter 1, verse 10 and 11, another verse of Scripture that describes this. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, and who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. In other words, those angels declared, You saw him go, but he's coming back. He's coming back. You know, I believe every Christian ought to take this verse right here and put it on their refrigerator to remind themselves he's coming back. I, I believe every Christian ought to be reminded because I'll tell you something. There's a lot of Christians that have lost hope. But this verse right here is my hope. The declaration of the angel who I believe was speaking on behalf of God said, he's gone, but he's coming back. That's what helps me to keep going, folks. Thank God for his birth. Thank God for his birth. Thank God for Christmas time. I love it. Can't, can't, can't thank God enough for it. Thank God for Friday before Easter, his death on the cross, the shed blood of Jesus Christ, who, who's, who, who's washing of, of, of his blood takes away my sins. Thank God for the resurrection. Thank God for the empty tomb. Easter Sunday, we celebrate it. Thank God for that resurrection Sunday. Thank God he's not there anymore, that he ascended to the right hand of God and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Thank God for that. But my hope is the fact that he's coming again. That's what I'm pressing for. I, I, I thank God for the cross, but man, my sins are washed. I'm walking on. I thank God for the resurrection power in the empty tomb. And, and I know that if I die and go by the way of the grave, that I won't lay there alone, that soon and very soon he's going to call me home. But my hope is just to keep on pressing because if I can keep on pressing, not only will we have what I talked about a moment ago, we'll have dominion with Jesus Christ, but what we'll also have is resurrected, glorified bodies that we'll have these new temples that we'll get to worship and honor and glorify him, that we're not going to be wore out, we're not going to cry, there's not going to be tears in heaven, that God's going to help us. We're going to have these glorified bodies that we get to go and be with Jesus. He's coming again. We can't lose sight of that, folks. In everything that we do, he's coming again. I, I want to close with something. I, I, I didn't get near done what I needed to, but let me, let me close with this. I, I, I shared with y'all, I can't remember if it was last week or week before last, that God put a young, has put a young man in my life, and I, I don't know why. But, you know, sometimes people come in your life and they cost you something, you know. 
But there's nothing that you give that won't be given back to you. And I'm by no means saying this to, to put roses on me, so please don't misunderstand my point about this. This guy moved to North Carolina from California, took every last sin he had to get out here on the promise of a job. And when he got here, the promised job wasn't there. Matter of fact, they had flat lied to him and told him that the job was there and the job was never there to begin with. They tried to get him out here to corner him into, corner him into doing something different that they wanted covered and told him what he needed to hear to get him here. And then once they got him here, they told him, oh, no, this is the job you got to do. Well, obviously, he was upset. And by means of a couple of people, he's ended up with me. Yesterday, he and I were having a conversation. Last night, we were having a conversation. His fiance, whom he's getting ready to marry, they were, they were having this conversation. And I assume because my friend that introduced him to me usually tells people that he's a full-time pastor because he tries to tell them that because he knows I don't like people cussing and carrying on and all this stuff. So he, he kind of goes before me and says, he's a full-time pastor now. You've got to know who he is, and this, this is what he does, and he'll, he'll treat you right, and he's a good guy and all this other stuff, but, but I just want you to know where he's coming from. Well, this guy was never told that. Everything happened so quickly, the conversations never really took place. He just kind of landed in my lap. So on the way home last night, or on the way uh, to Charlotte last night, I was talking with him on the phone. And he, he said, I don't understand why you're doing everything you're doing for me. My, my girlfriend thinks you're in the Illuminati. I said, do what? He said, yeah, she, 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 thinks that she thinks you're out for something. He said, I just need to know before I get too deep with you here what, what this is all about. He said, why are you doing all this stuff for me? People don't treat me this way. This is what he's saying to me. His mom is a full-blown Jehovah Witness. He decided he wanted to join the Christian church and his mom would have nothing else to do with him. Kicked him out of the house. He come here to, uh, we actually went to South Carolina and come to find out that he, he didn't know it until he got here, but just about all his family members except for his dad are strung out on drugs. No home, no job, no vehicle, a phone that he stepped on and crushed that he couldn't use no more. And he lands in my lap. And God says, you want to be my hands and feet, son? Okay, God. What do you want me to do? Some people say, well, you gave him a job. Ain't that good enough? It might be good enough to you, but if a man can't drive to a job or can't call when he gets to a job, what are you going to do? Tracy and I had him on the phone. We were driving back home yesterday, and this boy was so discouraged and so depressed and so down. He said, this is not all the way my life was planned. This is not at all how my life was laid out, and I don't understand what's going on here. I said, I said let me ask you a question. Have you, have you thrown me any question that I've not answered yet? He said, no. I said, have you presented me with any problem that's not been taken care of yet? No, you, you've been pretty good to me. We kind of got off that conversation. That was why Tracy and I were together. When I got by myself, I called him back, and we were talking. That's when he said his girlfriend won't know if I was part of the Illuminati. <laughs> he said, you got, you, got, you got to have a motive here. What's your motive? Why are you doing? What are you, what are you expecting of me? I said, well, honestly, I'm expecting a good day's work. If you give me a good day's work, I'm going to take care of you. He said, but why, why are you motivated to help me? First thing, he, he's a black fella. First thing he said to me, he said, my girlfriend was scared to death to come out this part of the country because she, she said everybody out there is racist. They, they ain't going to like no black people. What's this white man trying to help you for like this? So I let him ask all the questions. And when he got done, I said, his name's William. I said, William, first and foremost, I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. I said, I'm also a pastor. He said, started crying right there on the phone. My dad kept telling me God was doing something. I didn't understand him. And my mama kicked me out because I wanted to go to the Christian church. My dad kept saying, that's God, son. That's God. And my girlfriend said, hey, it's Illuminati. I didn't know what to believe. So, William, I don't have all the riches of this world, but what God gave me, he's given me to bless others. And I said, I'm not going to I'm not going to give to you and enable you, but I'll help you get on your feet. 
got him a phone, got him a car. He called me right before church, had his dad sitting in the car, and his dad's over going, woo I said, William, what in the world's that? He said, my dad's happy. So what's he happy about? He goes, he don't have to drive me around anymore. I said, well, so many payments, and it'll be yours. <laughs> But you're going to work for it. Because, you know, this is my belief, folks. You can give a man fish, he'll eat that day. But you teach a man to fish, he can eat the rest of his life. I don't mind helping anybody. But I'm not going to enable people to stay in their misery. Because some people are conditioned to stay in their misery because they like being miserable. But when you run along, when you run into some people like Williams that's just saying, hey, I've got a bad break here, and if I can just get out of this, I'm going forward. And you give them a hand and say, you don't have to stay in that hole because I've been there and I knew what it was like. You can get out of this mess. And I don't know where this relationship's going. I know what I'm going to represent. Matter of fact, he told me, he said, I want my family, I want us to get together and come to your church. I said, well, you got a car now. <laughs> come on to church, buddy. You need some gas money? Call your boss man. He'll hook you up, especially if you're coming to church. Jesus is coming. Why would you do all that, Pastor? Why would you, why would you help somebody like that? Why would, why would a, a, a church go and link up with another church to help a, a family called Dellinger's and raise 60 some hundred dollars to help? Because Jesus is coming. We can't afford to let one fall. We can't afford to let one slip through the cracks. We can't afford when God has enabled us and gifted us and empowered us, we can't afford to sit back and say, I'm not doing anything. Why? Because Jesus said, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was in prison, you visited me. Lord, when did we do this? Because when you do it under the least of these, you've done it under me. Folks, this is the gospel. The gospel's not just about me praying for you and you getting saved and delivered from your junk. The gospel is also being the hands and feet of Christ and doing what God's called us to do. And that's not always easy. It's not always comfortable. But God's faithful. God's faithful. I trust Him. I absolutely trust Him. My wife and I have been in places where we didn't know where the next meal was coming from. And God saw us through. And now I got people coming to me and saying, I don't know where the next meal is coming from. And I'm doing my best to remember from whence I came and saying to somebody, we can get through this. Just trust the Lord. God's going to be faithful to you. The prophetical view of the church is this. That God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die a cruel, cruel, cruel death. And the prophet said that it pleased the Lord to crush him so that you and I could have life. And the life that I now live is not my own, for I have crucified myself with Christ, but nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. That's the way I want to live my life, folks. Please don't mistake me sharing what I shared a moment ago is trying to pick me up because I'm, I'm, all the glory goes to God, folks. I'm where I am and do what I do and have what I have because God's blessed me. God's been good to me. My wife, we've had several conversations about this move with the girls and the money it's going to cost and the things it's going to cost. And I, I told her, don't worry about it. God's got us this far. He's going to see us through. I can't tell you month to month where it's going to come from, but God's faithful. He's a faithful God. And I'll close with the line that Paula loves to use. If he's got to scrape the gold off the very streets of gold to meet your need, I believe he'll do it. Amen. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Trust him. He's a faithful God. And if I, if I can't get anything else out of this service tonight, the fact that Jesus came, he lived, he died, he rose again, and he ascended to the Father, and he's coming back. 
That's what this whole lesson is about tonight. And this is what, this is all a part of the church. That's our hope, folks. But while I'm here, you and I need to live our lives to glorify Him. And I think we need to be intentional about looking for opportunities. I think we need to be intentional about listening to the move of the Spirit and the voice of God and saying, God, what would you have me to do to bless your kingdom today? I think we need to be intentional about people. There might be people that fall in your lap like William fell in mine. And we can make a decision at that point. God, I'm going to trust my resources. I'm going to look at what I got and I'm going to say, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Or I'm going to trust your resources and say, God, I'll do what I got to do. Because I know I got one that can restore and replenish and give back a hundredfold if I just trust you. He's faithful, folks. He's a faithful God that loves you. Amen. Do you love him tonight? Praise God. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you once again for the opportunity that you've given us to come to you in prayer. Thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy and all that you do for us. You've been so faithful to us. God, I pray tonight that you would bless these that are here. God, the hearing of your word. Let us not be hearers only, but doers of your word, God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And God, we've, we, we've, I've done my best to give the word of God tonight, and we've received it. I pray, God, that we just not hear it tonight, God, but we go out and do what your word has declared. The devil's going to fight. The devil's going to war. The devil's going to rage. But he is defeated in Jesus' name. And God, we can walk in complete and total victory. And every high thing that exalts itself against Jesus Christ, we can take authority and, and dominion over it and cast it down. Thank you for that, Lord. We come to you tonight in faith believing, trusting, God, that you're going to fulfill that and, and perfect that which you've begun in us, those things that we committed unto you. God, I give you the praise. I give you the glory and the honor for what you're doing. Be with your people. Keep them safe as they go. Help us to do all we do for your kingdom and glory. We give you the praise for it. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. James, be good? You got some? Hey, uh, can, can I get a couple of fellas? Is it heavy? You didn't touch it. So I probably need about three or four men that come help me real quick, if you don't mind.